It's going down YouTube. So I wanted to come out here and show y'all a few things. So, um, now that I'm seeing some new growth on this stuff, all these leaves with all these holes down them. See how there's new growth down there? They coming off. I left them on there for the time being because when I sprayed these plants, that was really the only leaves that the plants had. And I was trying to leave a little bit of something for them to do photosynthesis. Um, but uh, now that they're getting some new leaves, I won't snatch all this here, the majority of this off that's been riddled with worms. I think this also gonna make it. Uh, also, a lot of these, I see that aphids, the green ones. A lot of these leaves um, that I left, they didn't do nothing but collect aphids. I mean, the leaves themselves are compromised anyway, so it's kind of like what they expect. But so I'm taking all that off. But all the new stuff, and I sprayed again because it's rain. But y'all see that? That wasn't like that before. So, eh. clean you up a little more. Because a lot of times, aphids will be attracted to uh, compromised leaves. They'll be attracted to the other stuff too, but uh, they really like the compromised stuff so, and I'm gonna show y'all what I'm gonna do with these leaves because they're not gonna go to waste here in just a moment I'm just picking out some of this damage now this is sprouting broccoli so if you're wondering why this looks like it has a it's more bushy than you know it's got a lot of branches I'm trying to say. That's because this is sprouting broccoli. So see how many different branches and stuff we got. Uh, I prefer the sprouting broccoli because, I mean, the, the one with the big head, you can cut inside shoots to come back. But I prefer this because uh, it, it grows faster and the side shoots come on a lot faster. Like, I, I kid you not, you can break some of this stuff off and it's trying to bolt on me because it's kind of warm here but it's, it's actually been cooler hopefully the bolting process will slow down but um literally you can cut that stuff in a week you can come back and harvest again um at least that's been my experience so once again y'all see all that new growth y'all know that didn't look like that before and if you didn't see the previous video where the worms had just about scalped my plant Y'all go back and see that video. But you see how I'm doing this. This isn't taking very long at all. It's not rocket science. If it's compromised, it's coming on. If it looks bad, it's coming on. Because honestly, these older leaves, when they look that bad, they're really not contributing to the plant anyway. But as you can see, I pretty much just left all the stuff. And here's my pile here. I'm going to pile this up with the other leaves. Like I said, this, this stuff ain't going to waste. I'm sure y'all. I'm going to pile this in. I got maybe one or two more plants. I had already been breaking off of this one. So this one I won't have much to break off. Um, but y'all can see. So, I mean, your greens, if you're feeding them right, watering them right, They'll bounce back for you. Um, I'm not liking this here. This is a smaller collard plant, so I'm gonna be a little bit more delicate with it. Um, when your stalks are thick like that, you can just kind of snap. You don't have to worry about really breaking the stalk. But I wanted to show y'all something else. You coming off? See all that? How you mostly ate up? See how I'm a little bit more gentle with those? Cause that stalk ain't very thick. Those didn't really get ate up that bad. They got ate up some. You know what's funny? 
They've been eating my collars like crazy. They ain't touched my kale. They usually eat my kale all up, especially the, the center tender parts. They usually just eat it up. I thought this one was gonna sprout from somewhere down here. It didn't, but I still got that one. I got all this kale, it's really enough for me. But I wanna show y'all something in regards to vine borers. So, y'all see this squash here? This is two plants. That's one, and then one with the bigger leaves is one. So, but they're two different kinds. One of them is Buttercup Burgess, and the other one is Blue, Blue Lake something other. I forget. But this one here, the big one, I'm gonna have to wait until they put make some make some fruit so I can see what which one is which. But I'm gonna show y'all down here. I can't really show you that one. That's good. And I got peppers planted in here, and the peppers actually like the shade of this. Um, huh? That's a delivery. My bad, y'all. Neighbor rolled up on me. Well, actually, it's my neighbor, and he was paying his child. Shadow the dog's rent. But anyway, so I've got my rent money. <laughs> anyway, uh. Like I was saying about the vine borers, whichever one this is, and I gotta look, one of them is more like a pumpkin and the other one's like a squash, but I don't know. Anyway, this one here, let me show y'all. Y'all see that hole in that vine? Y'all see that? Like, the light ain't too nice, y'all, I'm sorry. The leaves, the shade and everything. Well, there you go. Y'all see that hole in that vine? Vine borers have done that to this plant. Here's another one. That's another hole. Now I've looked in there already. The vine borer ain't in there. But but it has done that to this plant four times. Now when it was young, it almost killed it. But I fished the vine borer out and buried the vine. And these vines will make roots. If you bury them vines, they'll make roots. And usually, like where that hole is, I usually try to bury that so it'll make some more roots. And I think that's why this one is so big and pretty because I buried the vine. Let me show y'all. See, this one starts over here. It comes out of the ground right there. But it, it, it trails this way. But what I was doing to this bigger one is when it trailed over here, because the bigger one actually comes out of the ground right down in there somewhere where those two big stems are. And it jumped over here. And like when it jumped over to the next bed i would cover it with um cover the vine with dirt because it's just like a tomato all them hairs and stuff it, it'll make roots on there and so wherever i would get that damaged place i would just bury it and it would make more roots and i'm not saying you have to bury it because i'm not going to be able to bury that part the stem is so stiff that it just it if i try to bend it too much it's going to break and i don't want to break it um but yeah, let me see if y'all can see. This way it come out of the ground and see that split? It was a vine borer in there. But this part wasn't buried. I buried that part after after I got the vine borer out. Um, and it put down more roots along the hole. I buried about a foot of it. Now, vine borers did kill. I had two of them in here, I think, and it's a big one. And it killed, vine borers killed the other one when it was young. Um, but I don't know, something about these, the stems on this is real tough like, and they real resilient. It's like, they don't want to die. They want to freaking live. So I haven't seen any females. I've seen a lot of male flowers. Um, I ain't been frying no squash blossoms. I probably should. Um, Cause why let the blossoms go to waste? Cause I see four good ones right here. Ain't no, ain't no females, ain't no need to have males on it. You might as well fry your blossoms. That's a tip, by the way. Um, don't just look at, I know they pretty flowers, but to be honest, they really not doing nothing. They drawing pollinators, but it's gonna make flowers every day. So when the flowers are spent after they close back up, cause you know they open in the morning and they close back up, cut that bad boy off down there, dip him in some batter and fry him. Uh, why not but yeah i just i had like two days where i didn't come out here and check this thing for vine boards and they had vine boards sure enough and they're not in there so they must have matured and 
blew off or burrowed out or whatever they do next because I know they, they turn into a flying insect. So, um, but yeah, I'm waiting. Oh, I see one. Look at there. I didn't think I had no female. Oh, I look, look like that one gonna be a female. Too. Ooh, that one sure enough gonna be a female. You can kind of tell by the bottom of them whether they gonna be females or not. But see that there? I finally got a female. So I'm gonna go back and look at the pictures and then I can tell y'all which one this is. Cause this vine actually grew all the way up here. Grew up here, got heavy, it slid down and now it's growing back this way because here's the end of it over here. So y'all see it's coming, it's coming back this way. But it's, I mean, it's like a pumpkin. It's gonna take space. And I'm gonna tell you now, if you're gonna grow on raised beds, you better have a part of your yard you don't care about mowing or you don't mind weed eating and mowing around stuff because um, these pumpkins and stuff like this, they're they gonna vine, they're gonna do what they wanna do. And it ain't, it ain't gonna be much you're gonna be able to do to stop them. Um, I got a tomato in there. I got a couple of peppers in there. I'm kind of using the squash to shade the, the pepper a little bit. Um, my eggplant, it got a flower on it. That's my biggest eggplant. My other eggplant over there got a flower on it too. We'll see if they set. I don't, I don't know if eggplants do like tomatoes. You know, tomatoes won't really set when it gets super, super hot. But like I said, it's been kind of cool the last little few weeks. Y'all see that cicada shell? In case you ain't from the south and ain't never seen them before. Um, then I want to show y'all one more thing. Here, green beans. I, it's, when it gets hot, green beans have a tendency to not set for me. I, I noticed that last year, and I didn't even know that these beans do that. Because, see how I'm just seeing a bean here, a bean there? I promise you, in the fall, I will come out here and get, out of these these plants right here, I'll come out here and get two pounds easy off of them. And then the next day or two, I'll get two more pounds off. Like, there was a period last fall where I was getting... Every other day I was getting two pounds off these plants. And I was just having to like give them to the neighbor. I was I was just having to just, but see right now you just, you get, you know, little harvest like that. Um, that's all I really been getting off of them. And then that, that, that that's gone too far, too far. Um, but I wanna get it off because if you let them go to seed too much, the plant's like, okay, I've done my job. And it doesn't want to go to seed anymore. I've been seeing a lot of lizards in here. I wonder if there's something that they're eating. Look, there's a big one. I saw a baby one earlier. He's running from me. I think that's actually a girl. I don't, he doesn't have, it doesn't have a little throat thing. And they have the little red throat thing. They're usually uh, male. And they usually puff up their throats and bounce up and down at you. I guess they think they're trying to scare you. But you're all like two inches, so you don't scare me. And you can't eat me, and you don't eat humans. So. But I wanted to show y'all, um, this video is only seven minutes, not that bad. So these melons decided, first of all, if I can get the camera to focus. See that? That's gonna be a female. This is a female, but you see how it's kind of yellow right there? I don't think they got pollinated. This one, I hand pollinated earlier. That's another one. This one hasn't opened up yet. So it looks like I'm gonna get some melons. This one, I didn't see, and I don't think it got pollinated. See how the tip's yellow? But I'm gonna leave it, because it, maybe it did. Um, Cause I'm gonna be honest and tell you. This year, mostly wasps. See, I think that one, I think this one didn't get pollinated either. Mostly wasps have been pollinating stuff, but I don't see them going to this stuff much. They love the peas. The peas is what I see the wasps all over. That was a lizard that just jumped off. Did y'all see that? I didn't even realize it was a lizard until it started moving. Um, and y'all see how my peas have just, they have just fallen and fallen on that one. And they're attaching themselves to themselves. Pull that off. But, Every day I get about a handful of these. And I 
know some people pick theirs a little earlier than, than this, but I tend to pick mine at this stage because see how many I done got already? I tend to pick mine at this stage because just in case I don't uh, eat all these peas, I know the peas on the inside are mature enough that I can grow plants for next year. Because if your seeds aren't mature enough, you won't get plants out of them. Because some people pull their seeds and pull stuff way too early. Especially stuff they're going to keep for seed. You know what I'm saying? If you let a cucumber get too big, leave it. Leave it. You know what I'm saying? Don't be so obsessed about pulling everything. Um, if you leave a cucumber to get too big, leave it. If you leave an um, okra to get too big, leave it. Leave it on there and collect seeds. Because I know everybody loves buying seeds. But why buy seeds for something that you already got? I didn't buy these seeds. Uh, I grew this last year. Look, 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 look up there. That's 15 feet. Ridiculous. Um, I have to get a ladder to get them. But, but you see, you see my little handful? Every day. It's the way I harvest. Every day. Just, I'm going to let that go a little bit longer. And just when you think you're done, see some more. Just when you think you're done. Honestly, I'm ready for these peas to be done because that fall, and I want to put some more bamboo in. I've tried to stand it up four or five times. It's not working. Peas just too heavy. And, and the bottoms is just too, too weak, brittle-like. Gonna leave them out up to nothing. So every day I get about this much. I ain't shell no peas, y'all, but this way I've been putting them. Y'all see my little pot running over. So, uh, yeah. But last thing I want to show y'all before I get out of here is my my tadpole phone. So I had no clue what tadpoles ate. I just know the tadpoles are always in my rainwater. Because I don't have no screens on my rainwater and blah blah blah. And I have frogs in my yard and I guess they come like eggs. So y'all see all them tadpoles? They kinda big too. This one almost got some legs on him. Can you see his little legs? Yeah, you can see his little legs. Look at him. Oh, there's another one over there. He kinda got some little Oh, that one's almost a frog over there. So yeah, these these my little my little pets. And I didn't know what they ate, but come to find out they eat leaves and stuff. Now, this is a two for one. I'll tell y'all this. And there's some dragonfly babies in there too. Um, look at that one. A lot of these got legs on them. A lot of these is almost ready to be frogs. Anyway, so tadpoles eat leaves like this. And this is a two for one. These leaves got aphids on them. Yeah, I could compost some leaves. And sometimes I do. But what I figured out is, remember when I told you about the fertilizer? If you're going to rip stuff out of the garden, Throw it in your in your water barrel. And it don't have to be your rain water barrel. Just throw it in some water. Um, and it'll break down and make fertilizer for you. And I ain't gonna lie, that break down crap faster than the company because I'll show you the other barrel I did. I got uh I got quite a few rain barrels around here. And if you wonder why I'm kind of breeding tadpoles, man, them things turn into frogs and toads and everything else, and they eat bugs. So. I ain't afraid of frogs, because they eat the stuff I don't like. You know, that's kind of my logic about stuff. I guess while I'm walking and talking, I'll we'll go around the side of the house and feed my babies in the back. I'll tell y'all a little bit about um, fears and getting over fears and stuff like that. Anybody that kind of knows me knows I'm into uh, the mind quite a bit, the psychology quite a bit, and why people do foolish stuff and why people do smart stuff and stuff like that. Look, y'all see how I'm swimming? Y'all see him swimming. Now it is a lot of pine needles and stuff in the bottom of there, but this will kind of be a treat for them. Let's see. They babies. They don't need that many needles. They little big. The mother was in the front kind of big. It's one, it's one big one. He swam off. It's just another little one in there. Put that in there. So like I said, all that's going to turn into fertilizer, but it's going to feed the tab hole too. Because, uh, whew, I do not like them things. Y'all see that thing jumping? Wait a minute. Y'all see him? Oh, I don't like them things. 
Let me have that grasshopper about four inches. I kid you not. I ain't put my hand down there because y'all know I don't like no book. I can't handle that. Uh, but they skate. Anyway, um, anybody that knows me knows I'm into psychology and mental stuff and why people do things. And, uh, there's a lot of mental things as far as fears. And I know a lot of people is trying to be on various journeys and how to um, get over certain stuff and, and move around and be able to do what they want to do um, without being so fearful of different things. And uh, last time I'm going to pause to show y'all. Y'all see all the water moving? It's kind of dark over here. Y'all can't see them that good. They kind of, um, I'm just going to put all them in there. Oh, that, that smells. Man, that, them, these, these collard leaves and, and brassica leaves, man, they break down. They break down fast and they smell terrible. Um, but the plants love it, though. Um. In order to get over some of these fears, you have to kind of change your thinking and your logic, or you have to gain information. Because when you know better, you do better. For instance, um, I don't like bugs. I really don't like them on me, for real, for real. But that grasshopper just a while ago, I'm able to tolerate him because I know he's herbivore. He don't bite. So really, is it really that much for me to be scared of? I'm like 100 times his size. He don't bite. He really just trying to get away from me. So logically, in your mind, you have to change your logic. Like logically, does that make sense? Look, look at my baby. What you doing? You standing by the oil? You gonna change my oil? Um. And it's the same thing with um. Now I won't lie. Spiders. I know that they're beneficial. I know that. But I also know that certain spiders can bite you and take a hole out of you too ass home said heart you know what i'm saying and, and it's nothing she did to bring that on herself it's just something that happened and that happens to a lot of people so with spiders I, I don't really look out there in them woods where i don't fool with nothing make as many webs as you want up here around my fruit trees where i frequent and go in and out all the time i can't have it i knocked down a web down there it was something called a carpenter spider i had to look up what the thing was called Dead as a doornail is what he called now. I don't, I'm not, I can't play like that. Like, I'm not just gonna, you know, you just gonna hang out and chill. No, you don't pay no bills here. Anybody that know me, I don't let humans hang out and chill over here that don't pay bills. So, you know. That's my neighbor. It don't matter, I don't care. <laughs> That's a shadow's father. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, just changing your logic about certain stuff or figuring out why certain animals do certain things, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, yeah, anyway, like, yeah, figuring out why certain animals do certain things. Now, I ain't gonna lie. I have fears myself. I'm not completely fearless. I'm not in love with heights, but working on this house, painting it, getting up on a ladder you got to get it done and it becomes a matter of are you going to complain and cry and whine or are you going to get it done i really don't have the time to complain and whine and cry because ain't nobody going to do it for me i really just have to do it so my fear of heights is lessened um it's, it's, it's a lot less than what it used to be and uh I still have a, me and praying mantises, we don't, uh-uh. Oh, and another bug that I really hate that I can't even get near, really. Y'all know them walking sticks. It look like a stick, but it's really a bug. Ooh, nope. I can't be fooled with that. Bugs should not look like sticks, and I get it. That's part of their little camouflage and how they stay alive and everything. No, 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 no. But what you're not going to do is, you're not going to sit on these tree limbs, and I think you are a limb or a part of the tree and then you start walking. No, nope. see, let me tell you something. Scary movies as a child ruined me. That movie Mimic, if y'all have not seen that movie Mimic, go see that movie Mimic. And y'all will see why I don't like praying mantis. The main thing that was killing everything looked almost just like a praying mantis. And also praying mantis, they stand there and look at you. 
and, and, and wring their little, I get, I don't want to call them hands because they're not hands, but y'all know what I'm saying? I'm talking about they praying. Yeah, right. Praying that I die real quick so they can eat my body. Yeah, them things is, uh-uh. And they beneficial to the garden, too. But at the same time, I'm praying, man, because I know he really can't. He can't eat me. I don't know. They got eyes like a human. They little heads and necks and things. They too much like humans for me. You turn around and look at me, I'm gonna have a heart attack. Cause you got a little bit too much sense. Uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm at 20 minutes already running my mouth. Um, I want to show y'all this real quick. I, I bought an avocado from the store. I planted the pit next to my fig tree and I'm gonna get that out of there. I just didn't have nowhere to put it right, right quick. So, God, where these things coming from? Y'all see how, see what I'm talking about? See what I'm talking about? You can't, you can't garden in peace. But avocado, that's what that is. It sprouted for me. I get these ants off. I'm allergic to ants. They just tearing my feet up. Um, but yeah, everything's looking good, y'all. Persimmon's still holding fruit. Um, I've been eating pears here and there. Um, this pear here, it ain't never looked right. Ain't no telling what's been munching on that. Um, this one look alright though. But uh, y'all see my my squirrelinator, squirrelinator. Turn over so the people can see you. See what I'm talking about? Killer. Show the people. Show the people we'll be killing the squirrels and the rats and the, and the uh frogs. Y'all don't kill the frogs. You ain't been after the frog cave. Um, but yeah, I got a few pairs that never did look worth a nickel. I'm gonna get them off. Then I got some pairs that, y'all see that? Some kind of worm got in there. They made a home in it. Uh -huh. Look at that. Can y'all see it? Y'all see that? Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. You fool around and try to bore up in my tree or something, man. I'm telling what you are. No, no, no. You got to go. Uh, but this one is that's for consumption. Ooh. These pears are so good. And they feel hard to the flesh, but when you bite them, they not they not really hard at all. Y'all excuse my snacking. Kind of juicy. Birds got all my figs. All the rest of them. I don't have two left. It is what it is. I hadn't showed y'all this in a while. See, that's my one little apple. And they just hide up in there too. But I gotta make a move because I need to go pick some figs. That's a big old tree I showed y'all. I may film and show you what I bring back or what I pick. But that's pretty much all I want to show y'all. You know, so until next time, conquer your fields, and I'll see y'all later.